views. And so what we can do now is add some images into these different views to be able to help us kind of build our model. And it's going to help us in a couple of ways. Uh, one of the ways that it's going to help us is just the fact that, you know, you and I are going to be building this model and you're going to be going through this process of learning the tools and the techniques. And you don't really want to be too concerned about the exact placement of points and, and you know, being too focused on trying to match the position and where I'm placing things. And so having these images that we're both working from that are identical will help us kind of eliminate that as a worry. You know, we'll have that image in the background to be able to build from. And you can really focus on the tools that you're learning and the techniques that we're, that we're talking about. Okay, it also allows us to get uh, a very similar, similar result at the end. Now, if you don't want to go through and build the exact same thing, you can make changes here and there. That's totally fine. As long as you understand what it is that we're doing and how it sort of applies, feel free to take it in your own direction, okay? So to add an image to our view, all we're gonna do is select the particular view. In this case, we'll go to the right-hand view. And I'm gonna come down to Options, Configure, and it's gonna come down into the Attributes Manager, and let's go to the back section. We'll go into Image. Let's navigate to the Project Files, and then you're gonna look in Referenced Files, and let's get this side. So that'll bring that into the side. Let's do the same thing here on the front view. So go to configure and front. And then there are some things that you can do here with those images. You can increase the transparency, which we'll do. I'm gonna take this up to maybe 70%. And we can do the same thing over here. We also might wanna move this up. So I can offset this in the Y, so he's just standing right on the grid. And then I'll do the same thing here. And we can also scale it as well. So if we go to Tools, Measure and Construction, you can see that he's 682 centimeters, so he's pretty tall. So we wanna take this down by uh, maybe about by half. So let me delete that measure. You can come back in here. And again, we want to go back to configure. And I'll just take this down to 400. Do this thing, same thing here. And then I can take that offset down because now you can see that it's a little bit small, smaller. So I'll take that down to about 172. And then we can kind of measure that again if we want to. So that is a little bit, he's still pretty tall, but that's okay. He's uh, within the ballpark. So let me go ahead and actually let's delete that. And now that we have our reference images in, well, you can see we'll have the ability to, when we build, match up the position of the different parts of the model. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin building by block. We've got this sort of overall shape right here, and then we've got these limbs coming off, and so we start to think about what we can do first. Let's just start with this big overall shape. Now, it is cut into a couple of pieces, but that's easier to do afterwards. We'll make the overall shape first. So we think about what kind of shape is this? Uh, we could use a cube um, or we could use a, a cylinder. I'm going to use a cylinder um, to start this. So you kind of just look and see, you know, what is the, what kind of primitive is close to the piece that I'm trying to create. So we're going to come up here and I'm just going to create a cylinder. Now it's going to come in down here, so I'm just going to pull it up into uh, position here. And we can come in and I'm going to turn this back to lines so you can kind of see through it there. Now there are handles here. There are also, if we go into object, you can also change the radius here. So we can change the, pull the radius down a little bit, take the height down a little. And so we wanna just get it in a rough position. And it doesn't have to be exact, but I just wanna get it close there. Okay, same thing on the side. Now right now you see there's a bunch of divisions here. We wanna reduce that. So I'm going to take this down to maybe 16. 
And we don't need the caps, so I'll go ahead and take the caps off. So we just have this sort of hollow tube there. Now we do want to have a little bit more geometry in here because it's not a completely straight cylinder shape that we're trying to get. We're actually trying to shape this a little bit. And so right now there's no way to shape it because there's no lines in there. So we can come into back to object and take our height segments and we'll add, let's maybe add five, let's do six. So we'll do something like that just so that they're nice and square shaped polygons. Now, once we're ready, we've got everything ready to, to go. Let's take our primitive and turn it into an editable shape because right now we can't go in and change any of the position to the points or anything like that. So we're going to go to Make Editable right over here, top left. You can also hit C on your keyboard. And now we can work with the points or the edges. So let's come in from the side. I'm going to go to Points. And let's choose rectangle selection, and I'm going to turn off only select visible elements. So then I'm going to come in and drag across, and then let's just scale down and move each one of these lines. So I'll kind of move this up a little bit, do the same thing here, and we'll just concentrate on one view at a time. And I'm just scaling it uniformly, so I'm not doing any sort of shaping other than just kind of scaling down that loop and moving it from this angle. So basically one axis here, or a couple of axes, but I'm really just moving it back and forth. I'm kind of come in and move it that way. You can see this one's still a little bit too big, so. And now when we come down here, I'll start to rotate it just a little bit to get the kind of shape that we want. We'll do the same thing down here. And I just, I don't want that, I want the line to stay straight. I just want to rotate it. Kind of pull this up and this one will kind of scale out a little bit. And then this one, kind of do the same thing. So just get kind of that rough shape of his body there. And then let's kind of pull this one down a little bit. It is faceted. You can see that it's kind of between those points. It's a little bit jagged. Okay, it's not completely smooth. Don't worry about that because we're going to be smoothing it at the end. Now we can come to the front. And you can see that it matches up pretty well. And you can see that my, my uh, drawing is off a little bit. So we can always go back in to configure. And let me just offset this a little bit. It's not exactly in the middle. I think that's a lot better. And so we can come in here and now I'm gonna scale it just in one direction. So take it out in the X axis. And then this one I think is okay, but I wanna rotate it towards me a little bit. So something like that. Okay, and if we take a look at it, this is the basic shape that we get, which is a good starting point for our character's body. Okay, we can then build out the, the connection for the legs and that sort of thing. So in the next lesson, let's do that. Let's prepare an area for the legs to connect the bottom part of the pelvis here and also the area where the legs can connect. And we know the legs are going to be a cylinder shape, right? So we want to have this sort of area that we can easily connect this seamlessly into the the bottom here. So to do that, what we're going to do is bridge across from the front to the back. So let's go to edge tool. I'm going to select two edges at the front of the model. And let's come back to the back and I'm going to select the two edges at the back. So we've got a couple of edges just at the front and just at the back. Okay, let's right click. And we're going to bring up the stitch and so now I want to not just connect these but create new geometry between these so I'm going to hold down shift and I'm just going to click between these two points and it's going to automatically create a geometry between now I want to have a little bit more resolution in here so maybe a few more lines and so to do that knife is going to be our friend and it's going to be a really useful tool that actually does a lot of different functions based on the mode that you have selected. I'm going to choose loop mode 
and let's turn off restrict to selection. And so if I drag across one of these areas, I can choose where to put this. Okay, we can also hit shift, and then I can put in an amount here under the offset, and it'll put it exactly 50%. I can do the same thing here, but I'm not going to be that careful. So I'll just add a couple in here. Let's count these up. So one, two, let me go back here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so this resolution of this border is going to determine the resolution of your leg if you want it to go in seamlessly. So um, depending on how high res you want your leg, you can modify this opening based on that. So let me select these edges, and I'm just going to start by kind of pulling those down a little bit. And so we want to create sort of a, a, a rounded opening here. And we can start to come to the side view to help us out. Just drag across those and sort of pull them over and out a little bit. Kind of the same thing here. And then these we can start to move up to create a little bit more of that sort of rounded connection. And we'll just kind of space these out a little bit. Not quite up to where we want to cut the pans because we do want to have an edge right there on that cut. So I'll just kind of pull those up a bit. And that will give us a little bit more of an area to connect. Okay, right in here. You can, if you want that uh, line to be sort of the uh, the belt, you could go ahead and or the or the pants end, you could go ahead and bring that line up. And that will give you a little bit more room to work. And I'm overshooting a little bit because when we smooth it, it will lose a little bit of volume. And we can come in and just bring this up a little bit higher. So we get something like that. Okay. Now looking at this on the front, probably want to add another line in here. So I'll just do a loop right there, and then we can come in on the side and just modify that. Anytime we add extra points, we just want to come in and tweak the, the shape of it. Kind of pull that out a little bit. So that gives us a, a nice place to connect in our leg when we create it. Okay, now we're starting to work on this guy, and we really need to know that he's going to be symmetrical, right? So he's going to be the same on one side versus the other. So a lot of times I'll actually come in and get rid of one of these sides, and that will allow us to focus on the other. I'm going to turn on tolerance selection. So if I any, any uh, polygon that this passes over will actually uh, select. And so I can uh, go in, delete that. So now we're only left with one side. And it just makes it a little bit easier uh, to come in and modify. For instance, I could come here now on this uh, side, go to points. And it's just a little bit easier to, to just work with one versus having to scale, you know, a lot of, a lot of things out. And so we can come in and, and modify it here. You'll see there's a lot of extra points there. It's all right. We can go to... Optimize, and let's just make sure unused points is on. Oh, make sure I don't have any of those points selected. There we go. And so now we can come in and start to tweak this shape with the knowledge that we are going to be mirroring it over. And you could, you know, add a symmetry right now, but I'm going to go ahead and wait on that. As far as the, um, the shoulder piece goes up here, I just want to use a knife and add a couple of lines right up where we want that shoulder to attach. So kind of right in the middle of it. 
And then we can decide, all right, I think probably right here up to this point here. And if I highlight those polygons, we're looking at these. All right, so might clean up the shape a little bit, uh, but let's come in in the next lesson and actually cylinder. And then let's bring it up and kind of into position. So I can take the length down a little bit. Let's take the radius down quite a bit. And we'll just use these images as a guide. And we're kind of looking at this actually from the other side. So this is actually, if we pull this over to match up with the geometry we have, it's actually going to be his left side. Uh, but that's okay. We just need the, the profile of it. Uh, so we want to, you know, we're going to, where we're going to connect this up, excuse me. And it's going to be these four polygons. So if we look at this, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight going around the perimeter of this. And so let's change our cylinder to have that number of rotation segments. Eight's a good number if you want to get something that's going to smooth, uh, but you want it to be low enough where you can deal with it. And so we'll change that to eight. Let's go ahead and let's kind of rotate this a little bit. Now we can't bend the arm yet at all because we don't have any resolution in there. So we'll get that kind of in in position and let's add we'll take off the caps and let's add a few height segments so one two maybe three will give us enough to to start from and then we can add geometry manually if we need to so let's go ahead and make this editable now at this point i'm going to grab some of these points so let's say that this is going to be our our elbow. So we'll get it kind of in the right spot. And I'm just going to move or we can also rotate these around a little bit. And we're at a low enough uh, resolution that we can do this and not really not really affect uh, too much. I mean we're just working with a very few points. If we're working with something that is a much higher resolution, then it's very easy for it to get out of control. But here, it's pretty hard to uh, to get into a spot where you can't fix it just by kind of moving some points around. So we'll kind of pull this forward a little bit. Let's grab this. And the arm that we have is very stylized, so it's going to be... Um, actually get a bit larger as it goes out to the wrist. Let me go ahead and select that wrist and scale it down a little bit. Let's also take the elbow, scale that down a little bit. And again, just kind of working from both angles here. We'll scale down his upper arm. and kind of move that. And then this part, this is where we want to start to uh, be able to connect this up. So I'm going to rotate it so that it is matches up with the that opening a little bit more. So we'll kind of bring this over, maybe rotate it a little bit more like that. Just so it's kind of facing the right direction. Okay, so we get something like that. Now to connect it up, we need to do a couple of things. We need to make both of these pieces part of the same piece of geometry. So right now they're two separate pieces. We need to combine them together. So to do that, we'll select both of them, shift click on both of them, right click, and let's say connect objects and delete. That'll get rid of the original two and give us one object here. Now we can go to our polygon tool, select those faces, and let's just delete those. Let's also optimize our points. And now we have an area that we can connect up. So let's uh, go to our edge selection. 
And you can see, if I click on this, I'm just kind of clicking on one, but if I go to select loop selection, then I need to come down here and say select boundary loop, and I can select that loop and this loop, and then we can do that stitch and sew, shift click across, and that'll sort of connect it up just like that. Now it's gonna take a little bit of sort of smoothing this out. Okay, we'll kind of select those edges and let's kind of pull them in to the body a little bit. Maybe scale them out a little. Now if we're gonna be animating this, we do probably wanna have a little bit more resolution in here to be able to deform properly. Let me kind of pull this out. And you can see there's some, some sort of weirdness here. All we need to do is go to uh, Faces, and let's do a uh, Align Normals. That'll fix that up. And then we can go to the knife, add a loop right in there. Let's maybe take this loop. We go to a loop selection and turn off boundary loop. We'll take that loop and just bring it down a little bit. Let's also add some more resolution around the elbow because that's going to be bending as well. So add one in there. And let's add a couple of lines down there. Okay, another way to add resolution is you know, like if you have one line here, let's go to uh, li uh, loop selection. If we have this line here, we want to actually make that into two. Um, you can also just do a bevel and that'll smoothly change that one edge into two. Okay, and then you can come back into your side and front views and match up the geometry a little bit more. But that gives us our arm connected into the body. So the next thing that we want to do is uh, start to, um, but one of the ways that I'll like to do it sometimes is to start with the fingers and then build the hand. And then we can think about how to connect up the hand with the wrist because they're going to be different resolutions. So with the fingers, just as with the arm, I want to make it a minimum of, and the fingers, they're smaller, so you can maybe get away with six, but I'm going to do eight lines all the way around. So uh, let's start with just a simple cylinder. And I'm going to orient this a little bit differently. I'm going to orient it in the Z. Let's take our segments down to eight. And we're going to leave the caps on in this case. Okay. We will get rid of some of those uh, polygons, but I do want to have um, some polygons on the end. Let's go ahead and let's make it a little bit. Let's bring it down a little bit and we'll decrease the radius. So. The size itself doesn't have to be exact right now. We just want to get a rough shape. Let's uh, increase the number of height segments. So do maybe four. I want to do fingers in this case that are more like, um, they kind of are spline based. So it's not necessarily you see three distinct joints, um, but you see more of like an overall curve to the finger when you move it. Um, and so I'm not going to concentrate so much on individual joints, but more the overall shape. All right, let's go ahead and make this editable. Now, one of the things that you need to know about these cylinders when you make those editable is the fact that the caps aren't really connected. So you can see it's not really connected up. So what we can do is, I know I don't want the ones on the back, so I'm just gonna delete those. We'll just select them and delete them. Uh, but instead of going in and welding each of these points individually, what you can do is add a connect object drop your cylinder inside of it. On the connect, you can change the tolerance, but it looks like it's okay. And then we'll take that connect and make that editable. And so what that's done is it's merged together any points inside of that connect. So that gives us that connected end there. Okay, so now I'm just gonna come in and just taper it down a little bit by scaling some of these down. We'll do the same thing here. So I'm just thinking about sort of one finger at a time. I'm gonna bring that down a little. Okay, let's go ahead and 
I want to take away, so you can see there's a pole right here at the end. And so I, to kind of clean this up, I want to get rid of some of these edges. So to do that, I'm going to right click and go dissolve. And that gives us some quads there on the end. Let's take those quads. And I'm just going to extrude those out. And let's kind of scale them down a little bit. And let's take that point out here. And let's take these sort of corner points, these, pole, these little three poles here. And we'll kind of push them back a little just to kind of round out the end of the finger. Now also, you can kind of flatten off the top a little bit if you want to give it kind of a little bit more of a, a finger kind of shape there. We can kind of flatten that top part just a little. And then maybe we want to add another little bit right in there. We can do that with the knife. And so we want to get sort of one finger. Now I want to add just a little bit of a curve to it. And so let's actually take the whole thing and let's rotate it down a little. Doing this helps in rigging. You don't want your joints to be completely straight. You want to have a, just a little bit of a, of a curve in the right direction or, or a little bit of a rotation in the right direction. But you want it as default as possible so that they can go in and create their bones and rig it up. So I'm going to create a little bit of a curve here. And this will give us one finger, and then we can actually use this to duplicate kind of the rest of the digits. Okay. I might want to kind of widen this up a little. So and kind of scale this out. Widen that up a little bit. And come all the way down here. And then what we can do is just copy this to create our other fingers. So I'm just going to control drag to create another one kind of right over here. I'm going to put it sort of next to it, rotate it down a little bit more, keep the base close. So we get something like that. Let's look at our, see how many fingers he's got. So he's got three fingers and a thumb. So let's duplicate this again. And then again, we'll rotate this a little bit more in a couple of different axes. Move it down a little bit. Let's kind of scale it down a little. But again, sort of align the base. Let's move this middle one up a little bit. Okay, so we get something like that. And then for the thumb, we can come in and I'll just do... Let's scale this down and make it a little bit stumpier. And this one is not going to be right next to these. It's going to be sort of back here and down a little bit more. So something like that. You can sort of visualize that, right, the hand without the base. We'll kind of align that a little bit more. Okay, so once we've got our, our fingers... The next thing we can do is take these fingers and begin to connect those together. So I'll just connect all these up until they're one piece. Okay. Now we can either weld these points together or we can bridge the geometry between them. If you bridge between them, you're going to have more uh, geometry that you have to deal with. So in our case, let's try to just combine these points. So to get both of those points and just say weld, and I'll click the center line. Let's do the same thing here. I'll click the center line. And so we'll do the three points right there. Okay. Now just do that on these three, 
And then on this one, we will want to uh, kind of bridge across there so you can grab uh, one of these edges or a couple of these edges probably. And let's do stitch and sew and we'll just draw this across. Okay, so let's come in in the next lesson with these all connected up and look at, so let's start by going to edges. We'll select a loop and we'll choose boundary up to the wrist. So let's start by going to edges. We'll select a loop and we'll choose boundary loop and we'll select this whole boundary. Let's right click and we'll do an extrude. And I'm just gonna send it straight back. And then I'm just gonna go to points and just begin to kind of clean up these points a little bit as far as the position, just kind of, kind of smoothing them out a little. Let's go ahead and on these outer points, I'm just gonna bring these out a little bit more in preparation for what we're gonna do here in a second. We'll take these outliers here and kind of move those forward. And then this one and this one, bring forward a little bit. Now, one of the ways we can reduce this because there are a lot more points here than we have on our wrist. And so we need to start to route, um, kind of down res this. And so let's, uh, let's grab these edges right in here. So just these three, let's do an extrude. And we'll just kind of pull them back like that. Let's do the same thing down here. And I think that's the right ones, yep. And so let's do another extrude out. Okay, now let's grab our points. I'm gonna grab these two points. Right click and do weld. And this time, instead of clicking in the middle, I'm gonna click on this one over here. That's gonna snap it to that point. Let's do the same thing here. Weld to that point, And then we'll repeat that on the bottom. Try not to get it cut off there. Weld. Okay, and then one more. So essentially what we've done is, if we take a look at this, so we had one, if we just take a look at the section, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and we've taken it down to four. So we've reduced it a little bit by rerouting those edges. Okay, we can kind of clean it up by moving these forward a little bit. Let's also start to come in and I'm gonna kind of move this over a little bit and give us a little bit more resolution in here to kind of kind of bend the hand. Kind of move this over a little. And same thing with the rest of the thumb. Okay, let's take this whole thing. And I don't want to do all the changes on one level. So let's take this and extrude it back a little bit more. Okay, and now here we can start to come in and say, okay, I'm going to take maybe these three points, weld them up to this top. Again, we can take this new point, move it down a little bit. As we start to get back here in the base of the hand, we're going to have less deformation that's going to need to happen here. We'll kind of pull these forward. You can see uh, these points are getting really, really close. And so we can actually experiment with kind of welding those together. I'll pull those out a little bit and forward. And let's just start to keep a count of our resolution here. So if we kind of take a look at this, and let me clean this up a little bit more. So starting over here, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 
So if our arm is, I think it's eight. We take a look at our arm. You remember we connected it up right up here. If we want that to be seamless, we need to get this 14 down to eight. So we need to eliminate six. So let's start welding some points together. Now you can be a little bit more careful depending on the type of geometry that you have to have. If you have to have quads, that you need, then you need to merge or weld at least three points together. That way you can get rid of this edge and still have a quad there. Otherwise, if triangles are okay, you can come in and say, I'm just going to weld these two points together. And that'll give you a triangle there, but it gives you now one point instead of two. We can try doing the same thing that we did right here again. For instance, I can come in here at the top, and I can try to do that same thing here. So let's grab these couple of edges. Let's go ahead and extrude them out. So something like that, and then I'll grab these points. And let's weld them over there. And do the same thing here. And let's grab these points and just make sure to kind of move them forward a little bit. Let me grab this edge right here and let's dissolve that out. So you can see that gives you just a couple here. And then we can kind of smooth it out a little bit. So you can spend a little bit more time on this and you can get something that's a little bit cleaner, but the idea is the same to reduce the number of polygons that are being connected up. Kind of pull this out. You could do the same thing down here. Let's see how many we have. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we still need to get rid of I think three more. So we can kind of do the same thing down here. Let's extrude that out. Now if you started with, if you had 10, then obviously you don't have as many to reduce. Or, you know, we're trying to make this seamless. You know, if you have a, a glove at the wrist, then you don't have to worry about that. Right, if the wrist is not going to be seamlessly connected. All right, so now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I think nine. So we just have to get rid of one more. I'll show you a way we can kind of smooth this out in a second. Let's grab this whole thing again. And let's extrude it back. Let's scale it down a little bit. And then you can really start to kind of put these in the right spot. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so just confirming. Let's grab these two and weld those together. And now I just want to create kind of a rough cylindrical shape or something close to it. Kind of pull that over. And kind of get these to be sort of equally equidistant apart. Not too far apart. So something like that. Now let's come in and kind of spread these out. I'm going to grab this edge in here and dissolve it. I can also come in and use the brush. So it is going to be transform tools. 
And let's use the middle mouse and we'll go sideways to dial in the radius. And oh, I want to change this to smooth. And then we can come in and just paint over these points and that'll serve to kind of smooth them out a little bit. So something like that. All right, so once we've got that, we can now connect it up to the wrist. So let's do that.